Hello, this is Tim Huckabee from Internology, and today we have a special guest, the, the man who created ASP.NET over a weekend, Scott Guthrie himself. <laughs> is that true, really? Uh, it is, isn't it? <laughs> no, it you is. You built a nice happy filter for ASP.NET over a weekend. It was over a week, but yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, thank you for coming, Scott. Oh, cool. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. So you've made some pretty huge announcements here at the PDC. I, you know, I personally have my favorite announcement. Can you go through some of this earth-shattering stuff for us? Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, hopefully for a lot of people this week, there's um, uh, been some pleasant surprises in terms of some things that they weren't expecting. Uh, obviously, we shipped .NET 4 and VS 2010 a couple of weeks ago, or actually probably over a month ago now. And um, you know those are obviously huge improvements that we're making to uh, you know just a whole bunch of things inside the framework, uh, ASP.NET 4, WPF 4, um, you know all the other great improvements up and down the framework, and obviously within Visual Studio. This week, then we kind of did two additional announcements in the .NET space that I think are pretty big. Uh, one is on the first day keynote we announced that ASP.NET MVC 2. Uh, is in beta with the Go Live license, um, which I know a lot of you know web developers and, and ASP.NET developers are pretty excited about. Ecstatic. Yeah, ecstatic yeah. about. Right. And then uh, in my keynote on Wednesday, um, uh, we announced Silverlight 4, and uh, announced even more the, ecstatic. Yeah, and, and announced <laughs> the public availability of that beta, which I think a lot of people were surprised about. Okay, so clearly my favorite feature of SL4 is full trust out of browser. There's not much more I, I can't do in, in Silverlight anymore. I get access to, to Office. I've got access to all the devices. That's, that's pretty huge. With Silverlight 3, we added support to go outside the browser in a sandboxed way. And uh, we're adding a lot more features to that with Silverlight 4. Uh, so for example, we now have windowing APIs. You can position things. We have notification APIs. You can do Outlook style pop-ups and, and activate. So that allows you to kind of minimize things outside the browser and then bring them up when the user sees something interesting. Uh, HTML support, drop target support. So all that's now, we're adding to the sandbox model. But new in Silverlight like 4 then is also the ability to go, uh, basically have an elevated model where you can go unsandboxed. And there you have um, the ability to access the file system. You have the ability to do kind of what we call chromeless windows. So you can completely control kind of the outer frame of the browser, or out of the frame of the app to, to customize it however you want. Uh, you can do whatever network ports you want. You can, you know, do full screen input. Uh, you know, a whole bunch of kind of capabilities. All of those things I mentioned do work cross platforms. So they work on the Mac. They work on the PC. Um, and then what we have done though is, is on uh, devices like Windows, we do actually are now also enabling when you're running elevated, COM access. And what that means is that you can create any COM automation object. So any of the Office APIs or any of the Windows APIs, and uh, you can basically program within your Silverlight app. And so uh, with C-Sharp 4, we added a dynamic keyword. VB's always supported that. And that what that means is that you can basically say, you know, create prog ID, um, you know, Microsoft.excel, uh, and then, you know, create a workbook, dynamically populate it, uh, display it on the screen. Or you could, you could program to Outlook and add a calendar event or access an inbox. Um, you could program to Windows and sync anytime someone sticks in a device into the machine, like a, a memory card stick, and do something special with it. Um, you know, you can search the file system. You can, uh, you know, pretty much program anything, which just opens up just a world of possibilities. Which also leads to you, you've done so well on the Silverlight side that we've got some pretty darn good parity with WPF. Mm -hmm. And I think people are going to say, so what do I need WPF for if Silverlight does so much? You want to comment on that a little bit? Well, yeah, I mean, w when we created the Silverlight project, one of the things that we sort of said was, we want to be a compatible subset of WPF. Right. And you know, each release of Silverlight, we've added more features that were in WPF into Silverlight. There's not much uh, left. Yeah, well, I mean, you could argue that Silverlight is elegant in its simplicity because there mm -hmm. you can pretty much do a lot of this stuff that oh, yeah. historically we do you know the 3D and, and things mm -hmm. like that yeah, there's always going to be that well Silverlight you know Silverlight's really focused on a lot of kind of I'd say the, the 80 percent sweet spot scenarios and um, you know likewise that we've added WPF features to Silverlight the other thing that we've done with, with WPF 4 that's coming out as part of .NET 4 is added all the features in Silverlight that weren't already right. in WPF right. so things like animation easing or cache composition, or the visual style manager, 
we've moved that into WPF4 as well. And so, you know, we're trying to get to a point where, you know, the, the programming model is the same, the APIs are the same, the tools are the same. And you always have a WPF, which is the full thing, you know, which gives you full access to everything. Um, and, you know, it's really about building large, you know, applications. You know, Visual Studio 10, for example, 2010, is, is built using WPF. Yeah. And then, you know, then we'll have uh, the smaller thing in Silverlight, which, you know, might be good enough for 80% of common apps. Um, that's really small, cross-platform, cross-device, uh, less than a 10-second install. And the great thing from a developer perspective is it's the same APIs, same languages, right. same tools. And so, you know, you can learn one and, and seamlessly transition between the two. So, so I would speculate that you and your team are, you know, many years down the road are trying to get where you have total parity. And mm -hmm. that might be beyond Silverlight and WPF. It mm -hmm. might be, you know, developer project X. Mm -hmm. is, is that where, you know, that, that's a lot of engineering. Yeah, is that where just, you guys are aiming? Yeah, you know, I'd say right now we have a lot of um, feature parity between Silverlight and WPF. Um, but there are separate, dip, dip, separate implementations. You know, one of the things that we're starting to look at more is how can we make sure from a code implementation perspective we share as much as well, which, you know, just gets you the next level of, you know, even bug for bug compatibility. Um, one of the things that we did announce this week with Silverlight 4 is that, you know, we are sharing the same CLR code base now between Silverlight and the full.net, which does mean that you can now create a single assembly, compile it once, and you now have binary compatibility between the two. And so that, that's really useful, especially for business logic or validation rules, uh, where now you can literally have a class library project and use it in both yeah. on the server as well as on the client or within a WPF app. Yeah, very powerful, very <coughs> interesting too. Thank yeah. you, thank you so much, Scott, this is great. Cool, yeah. And thank you for watching.